This channel is supported by Truefire. Truefire is an online library of lessons from some of my favorite players. There's thousands of lessons on there. You can use the promo code JNC40 to get 40% off of any of their courses. So I saw a video, uh, I think Fluff had a video talking about amps being a dying luxury and I kind of thought, doesn't really make much sense, does it? Um, I know that modelling is kind of a thing, but if you think about an actual gigging modelling rig, it's kind of as expensive, I think, or more even, than using an amp and pedals. So. I don't know, so maybe if you just think about totting up kind of your kind of rig. So mine is an HX Stomp XL, uh, a Mezaboogie speaker cab with an EV in it, and a Henriksen Bud. Um, that's easily as expensive as kind of an average amplifier with a few pedals, right? I think. 
I got uh, a question on my Patreon where you can get my backing tracks and all that sort of stuff if you're interested. There's over 500 now, but if you're going to join, wait until the start of June. Otherwise, you get charged for May and June. That's the kind of the way it works. Um, whether I do a video kind of discussing amps versus modelers. Now, that might seem a little strange if you know my tendency on the channel is that I use a modeler basically every day. I have a few amps. Uh, it was a larger collection at one point, but that has diminished over time. So I was thinking like, okay, what's the angle here? And for me, there's basically, once you have recorded tones, I think we're more or less at the stage where it's indistinguishable whether a modeling device was used or whether an actual amp was used. Uh, this is certainly made an even murkier uh, topic by the fact that you've got, you know, like Neural DSP with their quad cortex doing pretty accurate tone models. Kemper has been doing accurate, pretty accurate tone models for about 10 years. And, you know, basically blind tests have shown that we're most people pretty much incapable of telling the difference when it comes to recorded tones, certainly within a mix. And so that kind of threshold has been crossed. I think for a long time, people thought, well, there's no way that like a pod would sound as good as an amp on a record. Lo and behold, it turns out the pods have been used on records for ages. However, I do think there is a big distinction between basically your traditional modeling setup and your traditional amp setup. So I think what we're really worried about are things that aren't necessarily always recording. So if I'd say if you were someone who needs to be recording a lot or wants to be recording a lot or needs to have things that aren't, you know, super loud at home, the benefits of modeling really excel then because basically every time you plug in your modeler, assuming you're using the same preset, you're going to have exactly the same tones and it's going to sound exactly like how it sounds when you hear it, assuming you've got it set up correctly. The problem with an amp in this sort of scenario is that A, it's a little bit loud in some cases, particularly if you had like a non-master volume amp at home, and that when you stick a microphone in front of it, it doesn't actually sound as it sounds in the room. There's a whole art, there's a whole kind of system to, to miking up an amp. Uh, it's not to say that you can't get amazing results. Of course, we all know that there are incredible recorded amp tones. It's just that my experience, I don't know if you're the same, maybe you are, is that when I stick a microphone in front of an amp, particularly if it's a driven tone, sometimes I get a bit of a nasty surprise when I go to the computer and listen back to it. And I also think that uh, when volumes are up a bit, like when you're recording with an amp, um, sometimes it can be a little bit difficult or more difficult to hear pitch discrepancies. So I'm more likely to record an out of tune solo with an amp blaring than if I had a modeler like a sensible volume. So that's kind of the, the at home practicality thing of it, right? If you're not recording at home, I do think in a lot of cases, it's a more enjoyable, more visceral experience to, to record or just, just to play with an amp, sorry, not recording. Um, the sound of an amp filling up a room, you feel like the low end sort of shaking the house around a little bit. You hit, have your neighbors knocking on the door saying, what are you doing? It's 3 a.m. You say, but I've got a Marshall. Anyway, that sort of thing. I think that is more or less unbeatable. You hear people like Julian Large talk about this as well. So not even like, you know, gain chads, but even people that are playing sort of clean guitar. Uh, he is such an extremist that he doesn't like to even have a pedal between his guitar and the amplifier. So I think there are definite, um, I think it's sort of like a feel thing as well as a tone thing and an immediacy thing. So if you plug into a Fender Champ, for example, you know, it's split seconds between you playing the guitar and hearing the tone back, right? So I think there's the benefits of your modeler at home is that it's gonna sound very consistent and it can be recorded at low volumes and, you know, that sort of thing. You know, a year's old preset will sound the same once you bring it back onto the device, assuming that all of the settings are the same. An amp at home, I think you get more of that kind of grinning thing. Uh, if you can push the volume a little bit, um, then you're gonna have a really good time, I think, plugging into it. Where I think it's a much more tricky situation is when you start to factor in gigging. Now, this is what I mean. So a traditional model of setup, and what we are led to believe is like the optimal, is something like your modeler 
some people are able to raw dog it and just go to front of house and they might have in-ear systems and that sort of thing. Uh, in which case then I think a modeler does work really well for some of those situations. Uh, particularly in 2023, sometimes there is this expectation that there will be no noise except for drums coming out from the stage. It's an odd expectation to me. And I think it's less optimal for most people, including most of the musicians, uh, I think most, well, except for singers, I guess, uh, most of the audience, I think, well, certainly the ones that are close to the stage. Uh, I think it's basically for the convenience, more or less, of the sound person. And I guess if you're a touring band, is to keep costs lower. But I've seen shows where there's no amp on stage, you know, like Sleep Token Live, and I'm relatively confident that I would have heard the guitar if there was an amp on stage. I didn't really hear the guitar because the PA system was sharing all of the backing track, all the drums, the vocals, all this sort of stuff. I think in that situation where you're going straight to front of house, there is a, a fair chance that that guitar is gonna get lost in the mix, particularly if you've got keyboard players and all this sort of stuff, or another guitarist. That has been my experience seeing people use just modelers live. Other folks will also pair with it what we are told is the, the ideal solution, like an FRFR speaker. So this might be something like a power cab, or it might be something like a head rush speaker, which is basically a repurposed PA speaker. Most of these devices have a, a tweeter in it, and they also have the guitar speaker, and they're designed to basically produce tones from like 20 hertz or you know 50 hertz, so bass frequencies, right the way up to sort of 20,000. Real speakers don't quite do this, and real speakers obviously don't have like a separation where you've got the sound coming from two sources. For me, I think the actual solution to getting closest to having an amp type situation live with a modeler is actually to reintroduce a guitar speaker. And I think this is a thing that is easy to get, easy to forget about basically, because the guitar speaker industry is not necessarily got a whole bunch of money behind it marketing. You know, companies like Line 6, Headrush, and uh, some of the other companies have, you know, pretty successfully marketed full range flat response systems. And I think they have a place, but for me, if I'm really looking for something that gets closer to that experience of actually kind of plugging into a guitar amp, I think a big factor is having a, a real guitar speaker. So my basic rig for, for playing live is an HX Stomp XL going into a Henriksen Bud, which powers an EV speaker in a Mesa Boogie cabinet. And I think it's one of those things that we don't talk about enough that actually to do this modeling stuff live, it does take a little bit more gear for a, a lot of us to, to get something satisfactory than uh, just taking your modeler and just plug it into front of house. Um, and in some cases you might even, so if you're carrying around a power cab, you know, two by 12, you might as well, it's kind of tricky, like you're carrying pretty much as much gear as you would have been with a traditional amp anyway. Now, the traditional amp thing live, I think loads of people do this successfully. And of course, this has been the way that things have been done for the most amount of time. The benefit I think is that you know more or less how your amp is gonna sound. When I used to gig my Nomad, I would have it written down kind of what my settings were on the amp because things get shifted and moved around during kind of load in and load out and transport to the gig. So I had like a, a photo or a, a written down and I have to move the dials back to where they were. That's a little bit of a downside. I think also the thing is that if we have that silent stage expectation, a lot of the benefit of having an amp there kind of giving you some of that reinforcement from behind you and making it feel like you're actually playing a guitar amp can quickly go away. And I think folks that have tried just plugging a load box in and not having the actual speaker run on stage, they might attest to the, the thing where it's actually not that dissimilar from just using something like a, a Universal Audio Dream 65 or whatever. Once you take the guitar speaker out of the equation, I think it's actually kind of not that different at all, which is again why I would reintroduce the speaker back into the modeling kind of scenario so that you have that kind of connection to the real world again. The other thing with the amp stuff is that you then have to introduce a way of getting it to front of house if you're on a gig where you're being mic'd up. 
Um, so you've got to factor in, you know, costs of things like microphones or microphone stand cables, as well as being able to position that sort of thing and, you know, get good tones in that way. And then also a lot of people that are using real amp are then also going to need to factor in things like effects pedals and got cost involved with that and pedal boards that sometimes can need repair, sometimes aren't the most reliable. Um, and if you're flying with those, I think some airlines don't particularly like you flying with things that look a little bit like bombs, maybe. Anyway, so you've got that. That's like the ultimate, I think, in fun, having that amp pedal board set up when it works well. Uh, one of the other issues with amps that I'm now experiencing, the Fender Pro Reverb went to be fixed, is that some of these amps can be not that reliable. Um, and some of them are expensive. However, I do think your best experience as a guitarist, I think, generally will come just playing from a guitar into a real amp or into a pedal board into a real amp. I think those are where the real eureka moments can happen and the really enjoyable moments and the exciting times to be a guitarist, I think. Um, so I wouldn't be someone that says that you a modeler is always superior at all. Uh, I think there are a place for both of these things. I certainly think that in smaller gigs and club gigs, a guitar amp being there can really enhance the gig. And if you imagine like a, a Robin Ford gig or something like that, where suddenly he didn't have his amp or Matt Schofield or someone like that, I think there are huge genres as well of music where it really probably wouldn't make that much sense to remove the guitar amp from that scenario. The ideal scenario for me I think is where you have a blend of both if you're able to. Now convenience is one of the reasons that I do generally just use a model alive uh, with the kind of amp setup that I was talking about um, because it means that I, if anything goes down I can just replace that and another thing that you have to factor in with all of these things is kind of redundancy so if you have a guitar amp um, that goes down and you're on a professional gig then you're going to need to have a backup for that. So carrying around two guitar amps, for instance, or, you know, like a little backup head, it's, uh, it can be a little bit more difficult than if you just had like a modeler, uh, but you still then have to have like an HX stomp and you think, well, I need to buy two of them, then I need a backup HX stomp. So all of this stuff gets expensive. At the end of the day, I think you probably just have to try some of these things and that's even more expensive again. Um, for me, the, the main thing that made modeling work for me live, though, was having a real guitar speaker in the setup. And that completely transformed the situation where I was no longer thinking, well, that doesn't necessarily sound like a guitar amp, and more thinking, well, does that sound like something that I want to play? And the answer was yes. And I've since gigged real guitar amps and gone between the two. I don't really feel like I'm missing out so much anymore in the way that in the past I might have thought, well, this... This is okay, but it's not totally what I'm looking for. Having that stage volume behind me from a real guitar amp doesn't have to be crazy volume, but to have something, I think really helps. So that would be my suggestion if you've you've tried this stuff live and you think, well, it just doesn't really work for me. At the same time, life could be short, and uh, if you really want to gig a guitar amp, there's no reason why you can't. Um, and I think even this silent stage push that's happened, I think as guitarists we should probably push back a little bit because I think it, if you've got a guitar amp next to a drum kit you know a drum kit is pushing out way more volume in, in most cases than a guitar amp um, unless you're Philip Sace but I think there is a world where you can gig a guitar amp and have fun I think the ideal world for me is something like what you see a lot of pro gu guitarists do now like if you're Steve Vai or John Petrucci or something like that where you have your main guitar amp doing the thing, but effect, I think I'd much sooner use modeling and modeling multi effects type devices for the effects because I think when it comes to gigging, programming those is actually way more flexible than a pedal board in a lot of cases. So for me, sticking something like an HX effects or a fractal device in the loop of an amp for the ultimate kind of hybrid of the two, I think is kind of a probably the, the best of both worlds. But I think most guitarists could make use of both scenarios, right? Because you can't always be loud at home. Uh, sometimes you do just need to record. I think also plugins are just as valid as modelers for the home use things. Well, so you might not need a modeler, you might have an amp for your live use and you might have a plugin 
for your home use. I don't know. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Are you an amp or a modeler guy or both? Um, have you sold all of your amps? I'd be interested to know your thoughts on that. Um, I've not gigged an amp live consistently for quite a long time now, but having a real guitar speaker made all the difference to actually enjoying that. Let me know your thoughts. Oh, I was using the preset Eric Lead 2023 in the intro and then Litigator Lead for the kind of more gainy solo. So if you want to grab those, they're in the Gumroad folder. Cheers.